Hello guys and welcome to another repair video or repair instruction video if you want to call it that. This time about the GW Instec PST3202. This is a three channel linear power supply by GW Instec. Pretty solid and actually quite common unit. However, it has a failure mode and that is actually a very common failure mode. I'm even suspecting that sooner or later every one of these devices will have this failure mode. And this is why I wanted to make a video about it, showing you how it how that happens and how you can actually fix it relatively easily. So the issue you will face is at some point in time, you will just turn the unit on and it will stay completely blank. So the screen is blank. You cannot communicate over, uh, over GPIB or RS-232 to it. And obviously you can't output any voltages. So it appears to be completely dead or at least brain dead. And that's actually what's going on. But it's not such a big deal as you will see, so I'm going to go through step by step, explain what's going on here and how you can fix it. So let's jump into it. Of course, the first thing you have to do when you want to repair this is take the cover off. Obviously, you should disconnect the power because this is a mains power device. So always make sure to disconnect the power before you open it. However, if you open it, there will be no power more in there, so there are no mains filter capacitors or anything. So just unplug the power and then you're good to go. So this is how the unit looks like when you open it. So this is the front and this is the back. And the issue that we want to tackle is actually on the front panel here. So we will have to disconnect some cables here and unscrew some earthing cables here. Unscrew all the screws on the top and the bottom and then you can take the front panel, panel off. And that should, should look something like that. So there you have the control board, you have the actual outputs and underneath there's also the LCD and the and the keys and everything. So the issue that we're facing is on this upper board. So at some point in time, you will also have to unscrew all of these screws and take this upper board or logic board off. And the area we want to look at is around these capacitors. And when I zoom in, you can also already start to see what the issue is. So there is this adhesive here in this brown color, or at least now it has brown color. And you can see at the point where this adhesive got in contact with the aluminum from the heat sink, it actually started to corrode it and to eat away at it. And this is obviously very bad in electronics. And you can also see that starting to happen here on these vias. However, usually these are not the points of failure, but the point of failure in general is that this brown adhesive starts to get corrosive and starts to eat away traces and everything. And to investigate further, um, I would advise to now desolder these both capacitors here. Uh, if you're like me and you forget which one goes where, here's the picture. So on the right side, C214 is a 35 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor. And on the left side, C209 is a 16 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor. Both have five millimeters pin pitch. 13 millimeters diameter and about 22 millimeters in height. So if you want to go ahead and do this repair, you might also just put in new ones since these are Jamicon and by that not the highest quality brands. However, mine are, as I said, 14 years in service and still going strong. So I measured these, mine are still fine. So I am going to reuse mine for this repair. However, if you are already planning this repair and watching this video right now, you might as well order new ones just to be sure, because these are the main logic supply rails. So once you desolder these, you will be greeted with something like this. And now I can finally explain what the main issue is here. So you can see there is this brown stuff that has also seeped underneath the capacitors, which is not a problem normally. But since this has gotten corrosive, it started to eat away at traces wherever it could. This is not a problem here because there you can see there is the solder mask or the conformal coating, this green stuff still over the trace. So the adhesive cannot eat away at the trace. However, here, right in the center where the trace meets the actual pad, there the solder mask is obviously not present. So this is where the adhesive starts to attack and to corrode away the trace. And actually, even though you cannot see it here in this picture, this trace here is actually broken. And this is a big problem because this trace is coming from the rectifier, going into the capacitor, and then on the bottom side is actually the trace that's going further into the circuitry. So when this trace here is corroded like it is here, there is no power going to the logic at all. So this is why the unit was brain dead and not turning on. And this is what we need to fix. 
So the first thing I would advise you to do is to clean off all the rest of this brown adhesive because it doesn't serve its purpose anymore and it is corrosive so it will sooner or later eat away all the traces. So you can see I did this here. I even desoldered this diode to get better access to the um, to the area underneath and make sure to really clean all of it off, especially around this via and around these vias because they might otherwise be also affected. And you can see what I also did is I scraped away a little bit of the conformal coating or the solder stop mask here on the traces because I want to reinforce the vias by putting a little bit of fresh solder on top of that so that these vias are strong enough and will not fail in the future. And then the main point of failure, as you can see here a little bit better now, is that this trace no longer has connection to this pad and this is why there is no power flowing anymore into the circuit. There are two ways of fixing this. Last time I did this was that I just um, put a jumper wire on the back side of the board. Here I tried something else. I scraped away a little bit more of this trace and just put a piece of metal or a component leg on here just to bridge this gap. Uh, you can do basically, basically whatever you want. This is how that looks. So you can see this um, piece of component legs, which is like this piece here. I just cut off another component and just sold it on doesn't look pretty and it also leads to the fact that your capacitor will not sit completely flush to the board anymore. But I didn't care in this case, it works fine. And what you can also see is that I put a little bit of fresh solder on these vias and connected the solder also over to the trays. So these vias and connections are now reinforced and should not fail in the future. And then you're basically good to go. You can solder on the capacitors again. Um, just a note, if you if you want to do the other way, if you want to really do the jumper wire on the back side, you can put it between these two links. So this is the output of the rectifier and this is where it should lead into the capacitor. So if you are not comfortable with putting a, something on the other side like I did, you can always run jumper wire here on the back side. That will in the end might also look a little bit neater since you can see it from the top side, but it's up to you. Either run the jumper wire or do something like I did here. Doesn't really make a difference. And then you can put the components back on. So here you can see these capacitors now soldered back on. Make sure to orient them correctly so the negative is facing towards this IC here. And on the left side, the 2200 microfarad, 16 volts. On the right side, 35 volts, 1000 microfarad. Just don't get these mixed. They have to be in this specific order. And then you can start reassembling the unit and actually what you could also do, what I did here just to make it a little bit nicer and a little bit more like it was before, I put some proper silicone adhesive so this stuff will surely not get corrosive over time to just um, keep these capacitors together a little bit. This is just an issue if A, you're planning to ship the device a lot. Um, or at all. So if you plan to ship this device, that's a nice touch. So these capacitors don't rattle around and or, or if you want to use this in an environment where there's lots of vibrations or mechanical stress, you should also reapply some adhesive just to keep the capacitors firmly in place so that they don't, they don't get stressed by the mechanical vibration and stuff. But this time I use proper silicone adhesive so this stuff will not get corrosive and once it's hardened, it will also serve the same purpose. And then you can start reassembling the unit. It's actually not that hard because all these connectors are keyed in a way that they only go in to one slot and only one way. So just screw all the screws back in, put the unit together as it was before. And then once you turn it on the next time, you should be greeted with this familiar sc um, screen where it goes through all of its, all of its uh, data and all of its self-checks that should all pass. And then after that, you should be back with a completely functioning unit. So as you can see here, all the three channels are actually successfully outputting voltage. And this is obviously what to expect since there was just um, a broken connection in the power supply to the logic. So the logic just didn't receive power, but it didn't get damaged in any way. So once you fix this by recreating this trace or running a jumper wire, as I showed, um, you should be up and running back with a functional unit. And as I said, since this, this brown stuff, this brown adhesive is used on all the boards I've seen, I'm suspecting that more or less every one of these power supplies 
will at some point in time have this failure mode. So I wanted to make this video to show you what's going on and it's actually no rocket science, just fix up that trace, clean off the rest of the brown adhesive and then you can revive your power supply and still use it for hopefully a couple of more years. That was it for today. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye.